disc brakes offer reliable braking performance in all weather conditions, even those die-hard rim brake fans of you, you need to admit this too. What's talked about less though is actually the maintenance required to get them working in tip-top condition. The good news is, with these three simple tasks, we can have your brakes working like new again. So we're going to be doing cleaning, a basic caliper service, and finally, bleeding. So cleaning your rotors and pads is a reasonably straightforward job, and it's also a great way of actually making sure that your brakes work well, as well as silently. Uh, so what you're gonna need is a dedicated disc brake cleaner, some medium coarse sandpaper, uh, some nitrile gloves, some isopropyl alcohol, and some lint-free shop towel. So what you're gonna need to do is actually remove the pads from the caliper, and also remove the wheels so that the rotors are away from the caliper too. So SRAM actually recommend just using soapy water to clean the caliper, but do check with your manufacturer on what they recommend. Uh, now that you've actually removed the pad, it is much easier to clean out that caliper. First up, take a look at the pads themselves and check if there's any life remaining in them. Anything less than 1.5 millimeters, which is similar to that of a rim brake pad, then it's time for new ones. I mean, you could carry on using them, but then you run the risk of possibly damaging pistons or rotors themselves. Now, if you're keeping the existing pads, then the best thing to do is put them on top of a cloth and give them a good spray with a dedicated cleaner. Then finally, give them a rub down as well as the rotors with some medium coarse sandpaper, making sure that you remove any marks or scores from them. Also, whilst the pads are out of the caliper, uh, spray around inside of the caliper with the isopropyl alcohol and then wipe that away. Helps clean it. So the piston's job is to actually move those brake pads in centrally to the rotor. Sometimes they can become sticky or in the worst case scenario, even stuck, meaning to poor braking. Now, the telltale sign of this, other than looking down and seeing only one of the pads moving, is that you could well get rotor rub or a bigger drag than normal, or one of the pads is simply not wearing out in corresponding to the other one. So very carefully, with the brake pads removed, simply pump the brake lever a few times until you see about four millimeters of the pistons advancing out of the caliper. Uh, don't go any further than this, as you may well actually pop the pistons out. Right, so now just give those pistons a good clean with some isopropyl alcohol, and then with some light grease, so for these SRAM models, I'm actually gonna use some Avid Dot Grease, simply give those pistons a light coating and then push them back in place with the tire lever. Now advance them again and push them back and do this about three or four times. Uh, this is actually something which I normally do when replacing my pads anyway. It's just a good bit of preventative maintenance. Now if one of them is actually stuck in place, I suggest holding the freely moving one in place with a tire lever, a plastic one, please, and then give that lever a pump a few times and then with a satisfying pop, that piston's gonna move out. And then simply grease it and push it back in. So hopefully now that you've done your piston service, your brakes are working nice and smooth and you've got yourself some nice pad movement in there. Uh, however, sometimes your brakes feel a little bit spongy or there's too much pull in the levers. In that case, what we're gonna to need to do is bleed the system. Basically over time, air can actually get into your brake lines and the air can be compressed, but the fluid in there can't. So that compression that you feel, that's what gives you the crappy brakes. So the process of actually bleeding the brakes uh, puts in fresh, new, clean oil and removes those pesky air bubbles that are causing the issue. So each manufacturer has their own process for actually bleeding the brakes. Uh, so make sure you do check in with them. SRAM themselves, they use a silicone-based dot fluid and Shimano uses a mineral oil. Neither of them are particularly good for you, so make sure you are using some protection, so make sure you're wearing those gloves and also dispose of any waste fluids safely and responsibly. Now it can feel like quite a daunting process actually the first time that you do bleed some brakes. Uh, but however, just follow the instructions, make sure you've got all the correct tools there and you'll be all right. Now we're not actually gonna take you through the process of doing it because each manufacturer is different. But in essence, uh, what you are gonna use for these SRAM model is one syringe 50% full and one 25% full. It's not quite as simple as that though. So insert a bleed block into the caliper. Not having the pads in place actually prevents any contamination as well as not overfilling your system. Now remove the bleed port screw at the caliper and thread that half full syringe on there and then do the same on the lever itself. You are gonna to have to check with your manufacturer though and follow their process and it really is pretty simple to do. I hope that now your disc brakes are working like new again. Let us know your tips and bits of advice, little bits of tender love and care for disc brakes in the comments down below. Also, remember to like and share this video with your friends and subscribe to the GCN Tech channel. Click on the logo on screen right now. And for two more great videos, how about down here for five hacks for less flats and down here for Peter Sagan's Pro Bike.